Yeah, you've got a huge tank, and the, the 1DX is even larger. Right. And so I had the NEX 7, which I also reviewed for Before You Buy. Um, Let's, let me and, just say, you know, that, say... That was like my smaller camera, mm -hmm. but... There's two. There's one way, really, to get this much smaller, which is eliminate the mirror. If you right. look in digital SLRs, in fact, all SLRs traditionally have had a prism in these that acts as a mirror that allows the light from the lens to come up through into the viewfinder, and, and so that you can see the... Uh, what you're what through the lens what you're going to get a picture of but that that is a big old mirror that you have to move out of the way so lately we've seen a number of mirrorless solutions instead of having an optical uh, prism that has to be moved up out of the way adding to the size and the complexity of the body uh, these cameras now use uh, electronic viewfinder essentially a right. video tap that looks through the lens and then you see what the camera is going to see through the viewfinder. We, we want to put this back on because yeah, that's I, the actual sensor in that's there. That's the actual sensor. You might want to put I'm your lens back on there. Over, uh, the <laughs> you know what's worst? Somebody told me micro spittle. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't want to get anything wet or anything oily or right. greasy Right, and in spit there. is a little acidic, so it can yeah. actually etch the uh, surface of your full frame. Yeah. So this so, is exciting. We, As you mentioned, the NEX, I uh, bought uh, Olympus a OMD, OMD. Right. Uh, which is a micro four-thirds. Your NEX 7 is an APS-C sensor. Right. It was a small sensor but as well. But these, these small cameras have, until now, except for the very, very high-end uh, cameras, uh, have... Like for yeah, instance, there's been a couple of like uh, what fixed uh, full frame. Yeah. Sony was it the uh, RX one? And or what's something the really like that? what's the really expensive? There, one? I um, always forget uh, the name of it because I don't want to. I don't want to think about it. Leica, like that's it. M eight or something. Yeah. The, so I they've had full frame sensors, yeah. but it's very rare in the mirrorless right. sphere. Then Sony, yes, put the world in a tizzy last fall. So so Sony said we're we're going to put a huge sensor in our kind of mirrorless body, and nobody had done that before and it's exciting for a lot of reasons because it means you don't have to carry around that huge camera to get a full frame quality um, picture and it's the one thing where you know I have a full frame camera and it's large and I have to decide is it worth big bringing around the huge 5D Mark III, the 1DX, um, especially if you're traveling, uh, you know it's just a lot more to go with. Well, in fact, just the we, battery charger for my 1DX is larger than this entire camera. The preview versions of this, this is the, you have the A7, right. I have the A7R, we'll talk about the differences in a second, but the preview versions of these cameras were seeded out to some of the world's best known photographers yeah. to universal raves. There, there was a lot of sort of hype and a lot of, um, you know, pre-ordering. I think I got my pre-order in like a day after it was announced yeah. or the same day, so. Trey uh, Ratcliffe, uh, very famously, who had just recently given up his full-bodied Nikon oh, right. DSLRs for <clears throat> the Sony NEX cameras, went the next step, gave them up for this. He is now, the, there is a point to be made with this, that he is a landscape photographer. Right. But he's decided, Trey Ratcliffe has decided to do all of his shooting now with his A7R. He was right. using a D800. And uh, D800E, and this is actually the same sensor as in the Nikon D800E. Yeah. So I think it's an easy transition for him to make. Yeah, and this is very similar to the D800. So Let, you're, you're essentially getting a cheaper version of that. Yeah, because that's like a three um, or four thousand dollar body, it, right? Yeah. yeah. This, so, so the A7, um, this body only retails for uh, around seventeen hundred dollars, like sixteen ninety eight, somewhere around there. Um, and there's a kit version that's also available that has a twenty eight to seventy. Uh, kind of zoom lens, but it also has optical stabilization. So you can get it in a kit with a lens, which is probably what most people are going to do if it's their only camera. But I'm so sort it's about of a two thousand with the lens. Yeah, it's about two thousand with the lens. But I'm a fan of buying the body and then just using either my existing lenses or picking exactly what I want. I don't necessarily want what is in a kit lens. Um, what are but, the specs of that so A7? The, the specs on the A7 is that you get a twenty-four point three megapixel full frame sensor with fourteen bit RAW. And uh, so that it's already quite large. The A7R, I believe, is 36, but yeah. it's it's a little bit higher. Um, you do get a phase detect autofocus, which is really nice in the A7 because it means that in the actual sensor there are phase detect um, for high quality autofocus. So it's a little better at you know acquiring an accurate autofocus or continuous tracking and for things like that. Um, does about five frames a second. And um, you have a lot of great features. Uh, the electronic viewfinder, I had this on the NEX7, and it was a little laggy, a little kind of floaty and blurry, especially in lower light. And they've significantly improved it in the A7. 
and, I, and the a7R has the same viewfinder as well. So the big difference between the a7 and the a7R is that this is 39 megapixels. Yeah, uh, it's a larger, uh, it's the same sensor, both full frame sensors, right. but it's just a higher resolution. That's not necessarily a pro. You're going to get better low light performance, for instance, on the a7. Right, so the, the, the low light and high ISO performance is a little bit better on the a7 than the a7R. Yeah. But the a7R also removes the anti-aliasing filter. That's like the, the which, D800E. Which is like the D800E. And now there's pros and cons to that. It means right. that moiréing is more likely, right? Right. So uh, with a shirt like what Leo's wearing right now, it's got a very fine kind of linen pattern. You probably to can't it. even see it. You but probably can't see it on the on the cameras, but that's the kind of pattern that can show in certain um, certain environments a kind of moire effect, which is, looks sort of like a rainbow. Yeah. And the issue with that is that that's something that you can't really correct later in RAW easily. There are you know, removal software and things like that, but it's something that's not as simple as a simple vignetting or distortion or now, another correction. I should point out this doesn't happen that often. Right. You would be able to see it in the electronic yes, viewfinder, and, you and then a minor adjustment to the zoom yeah. or the focus would and, generally and the, fix that. The benefit is that you don't get this essentially blur filter that it's is placed softening. over. It's a softening filter yeah. that's placed over the sensor. So the issue is that you're trading. You're trading the phase detect sensors for the lack of an AF uh, uh, filter. So, so that okay, that's the side so effect. So that's the side so, effect. So there's two, if you two things. You no longer have R, the anti moiré, and you no longer have phase detect well, focusing. Well, so you lose the phase detect focusing when you do the A7R, which this is the uses one that, right. Peak so that focusing. uses contrast. Contrast, and yeah. And so the the regular A7 still has the phase detect, uh, which means it should be more accurate for focusing. Um, however, I felt it was still a little slow, and it's, it's not the kind of thing, either of these cameras are not going to be the kind of thing you're going to see at the Olympics for sports. They're not very they're, fast. They're not very yeah. fast. Now, one of the other things that people really liked about this, uh, I'll, I'll give you a negative right up front. There are only currently two lenses available. You can use the NEX uh, E lenses, right. but Which they're cropped. cropped because right. it's an APS sensor. So if you want to take advantage of the full Oops. frame sensor, don't worry, that's just an $8,000 uh, $8, lens. It's no big deal. If you want to use the, if you want to use the, uh, we'll, we'll, put, we'll put that up uh, on something more stable. <laughs> uh, if you want to use um, uh, other third-party lenses, you can use an adapter. I have, there are a number of companies that make these. This is a Metabones adapter, about $400 adapter. Which I, which I have the same adapter. It allows, so that I can use my camera. And they make this for a variety of lenses I'm using here. These are the same lenses I used with my uh, Canon 5D Mark II. These right. are the good Canon L lenses with the adapter. What's nice about the Metabones adapter, unlike some of them, is that all the electronics still work. Yes. You'll, so you'll autofocus, keep everything. Autofocus, uh, but what's not aperture. so nice is it really slow. Yes. So slow that you almost always end up using manual focus. Right. And now that is one of the things that these cameras are very good at is manual focus. They have a, one feature is an auto zoom on the uh, EVF that lets you see very closely. Right. The pe uh, you don't have peaking in yours. Uh, no, do these you? do peaking they as do. well. Okay. The, the so that's the other thing. I mean, uh, you would think you know if this was a Canon, Canon would limit the features and firmware of what is in the A7 compared to the A7R, because it's just sort of what they do when right. you look at the different lineups of Canon. That does everything this that does the R does. everything that the R does. So, it so has peaking is nice. The, so the peaking. Me, it'll um, show you uh, where it's focused, and, and it'll light up right. where so it's what peak it, focused. Right, so what it does is, if you haven't seen it before, is it, it highlights high contrast edges. So it's sort of like running a, a edge detection and a contrast detection, and it will, along the trim, so like you would see if you were looking at, at me through this um, sort of peaking filter, as you were manually focusing forward and back, you would see that the most in focus is going to have little peaking along all the contrast cool. areas. You'll have little like ridges of the color that you choose, and you can choose white, red, or uh, yellow. The point being, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds on the pros and cons. I, I think we should start yeah. talking about how we use it. But the point being. Manual yes. focus is actually a very relatively easy thing to do yeah. in here. And I, I've been using, I've gone from using autofocus all the time on the on the back button AF right. um, on my you know 1D and my 5Ds to for the last couple uh, trips I took the A7 on. 99% manual focus. Not so great on and horse races or lacrosse no, tournaments. But, but for what I was doing, it it was actually really nice. It, well, and that's my point. In the way. One of the reasons a person like Trey Ratcliffe really likes this camera is he's doing landscapes. Yeah. And if the if you're using a tripod and you don't have to, if you're not shooting birds in flight, you don't have to, you know, the autofocus is a little slow even on using the the uh, the actual yeah, so lenses, native lenses yeah. the native lenses, the so-called FE lenses, full frame E lenses. So. I guess the point I would make is there's only two native lenses right. now. 
They're good. This is the, probably the best of them. This is a 55 millimeter 1.8. There's also a, what is it, a 30? There's a 35. 28? I want to say a 28 one. There's a 28, 35 one zoom. And then, there, anyways. There's, there's a couple that's available now. There's 12 in the roadmap, and there's th two or three that are coming out in the next couple months. The roadmap going to the end of next the year. Roadmap but they are the promising year, a lot of lenses. I've got a lens on Here's the first thing I would say is. While a lot of people, including Trey, talk about using adapters and using their beautiful right. Leica lenses on this thing, be aware that you're probably going to be doing manual focus. It's going to be like you do with a Leica. It's going to be a little bit finicky, a little bit fussy. And it's for somebody who's willing to take the time. I've decided it's just too much work for me. You, I'm going to use the stock if lens. If you see on this side lens. by side, it also where has significantly you have the, the bulk. adapter on it. Yeah, it has to push, you know, essentially the lens out. <laughs> right, so you end up with this huge lens. And what's happening is that you can't simply mount a lens that was designed for a system with a mirror box directly to a mirrorless right. camera. And that's why you have it's to stage it out because you would lose your infinity focus. So if you were able to somehow tape the lens directly onto the camera, you would not have the ability to focus in. Having said anymore. that, so the, the combination of the the uh, Zeiss lens is a right. very good. This 55 millimeters is the one I'd recommend. Lens. With this body, makes a very compact, very nice shooter. I mean, the full yeah. frame really you notice it. It's very good, but it's finicky. You know, I these I've seen. Well, they went with the, so they went with this retro design, right? So I like the design. I don't mind all the di it, it dials. It went a little retro, and they decided yeah. they did some good things. Like they got rid of the NEX7 um, kind of consumer menu, and they went to a, a more professional menu system that would be what you find on the regular Sony Alphas. It's very similar to Nikon and, and Canon menus. Um, but they made some decisions with the, with the body and handling where um, you know, the, the shutter button is right on top of the on-off switch. And it's in a very traditional location if you're on a film like an F-series uh, Nikon film camera. However, it's always a little awkward. You, know, you, you hold the camera now and you want in your grip, that's where your shutter is. But yeah. instead, it's, it's up here. You have to reach around and sort of change the placement from what's natural. There have been some legitimate little dials and, and there have been some legitimate complaints about their ergonomics. Some of the buttons yeah. are hard to reach. Um, and the electronic viewfinder, as good as it is, has an automatic sensor that, that bothers decides you. it yeah. decides you want to look through the viewfinder. You want to look at the screen on well, the Well, when back. you put your eye up to it, uh, it, the default would be, of course, the LCD. Right. And it's a very, very good high-resolution LCD. But then when I put my eye up to the sensor, it will switch to the sensor. Right. And you, can and you see, have a hard time? You right, find that you, not? If you turn that around and, and uh, you're going to accidentally the camera, anytime you, you <laughs> we have studio lights, so it's a little harder. But no, anytime, I'm doing it just with my finger, yeah. You, you can just sort of cover it. And so what <laughs> happens is if you're trying to shoot low, like if, right. you've, if you've got the, so you've got the, the tilt LCD. I like that too. And so if you're trying to shoot low, if you're trying to shoot in and tight and do like, you know, some work like this, it'll keep blinking right. off, especially in, in dark. Conditions. And there's no manual uh, button? There is a manual button, but it takes you to the menu, which then right. forces you to scroll through the menu to select between Not auto and, you yeah. know. But it's, it's that sort of Sony thing where everything is buried in the menu settings. and So let, let's... You can set it up, but... There's a lot to be said, and I don't want to... So, we could so spend an hour stuff, on this. Yeah, so photo stuff, you know, it all really works exactly as you expect. It takes fantastic raw photos. Um, these JPEGs, are, are the, according to DP Review, have been very poor. I, yeah, I don't never ever set, shoot JPEGs, so I never I don't set know. my stuff to JPEG yeah. in the first place. Don't buy this to shoot JPEGs. These are some photos that I shot. I've had the camera for a couple months, and I've, I took it to uh, San Antonio. I took it to Puerto Rico and to Paris. And so it, it's been my travel camera now. And I had, I've had, i always had regrets when I bring my NEX, when I bring a uh, point and shoot, when I even bring the NEX? Small cameras, even the NEX. It's not as good right and and it's and you don't have the depth of field you don't look at the, the depth effect. of field here it's really it's, nice it's yeah. really fantastic so i i can honestly say that i was able to go in, and use the camera and not think about you know you think about some of the little issues but you don't think i wish i had my 1dx i wish i had a 5d mark iii i can't take this picture without it the and quality the, is the, the superb. quality is superb and so not have you know having that that being said the video features I don't have a, a video to show. However, this checks every single box that you would really want to have for video on a DSLR. Yeah. And so 